Well, I'm very sorry to speak to you so late, and I think you are grand to still be here. I'd just like to acknowledge... Mm, dear. Come back. I'd just like to acknowledge the... Um, excellence of the organization of the conference. They're really good, number one. And number two, the IT is excellent. And so I thank them particularly for this. Now, this is a hot, this is a funny subject, really. And I thought I was going to speak tomorrow, but somehow it's today, because I wanted to be amongst the surgeons, not amongst the tired uh, <laughs> attendees. But anyway, um, I thank you very much, and here we go. I'll try and get on. We know this is a new population, the Gooches, and the question is, what is the surgical implication? Um, as you know, this overlap causes an overlap amongst colleagues as well as amongst patients, and the thing of surgery is absolutely not solved in this group. Now, total correction is a dream for complex congenital heart disease, and really there are very few that the surgeon has managed except for the following simple lesions. They've got to be watched. We know that now. we made the point. We don't need to go on about it. Now, the cardiac surgeon is a vital part of the specialist GOOT service, and it occupies at least 20% of admissions, one in five, and of those reoperations are very important. The major call on the surgical skills, and I would say not only to surgeon but physician, they must read the original operation report. I have seen so many patients treated by so many cardiologists, and they've never seen what the surgeon did originally. This is bad. Now, a cardiac surgeon in this a surgery in this group has a number of problems besides the incidence of reoperation. Higher mortality, complication, time in theater, intensive care, the incidence of renal failure and hemorrhage. And it needs, as I will say not once but several times, specialist numbers, not the occasional case. Now here you see the age of death of congenital heart disease in the, up to the 80s and then in the latter years. And you see the age of death has now much more common in the adult group and is getting later and later, which is excellent, and it's due to our advance. Now, when you look at the causes of death, and here you see on the left the causes, uh, or the events, I think would be better to say, and you see the commonest event in the death of a gooch is not old age, it's reoperation, which suggests that it is a problem. And um, of course, there are other causes, many, but we have to look at this seriously. And reoperation is in red, and you see it's much commoner than first operations. Now, the, the reoperation mortality reported is, looks very low. But when we first reported it, and it's not on this slide, which was made by a surgeon, um, it was 9% in the early days. And I can assure you the reoperation mortality is higher than ever reported, um, I believe. Now, there are a number of problems to account for this. The reoperation sequence, the poor surgeon, this is the instance from Victor Sang's. Um, group, and his, he gave me these statistics. The first reoperation accounts for 50%, and then you can go on up to the fourth, 7%, or it may go up to the tenth, which is the longest I've known, and the same in the Mayo Clinic. And the mortality is closely related to the operation sequence. So the more operations you have, you have to add a mortality. Now, where does that mortality come from? Well, I'm not a surgeon, um, and, and, but one of the things is that the heart is stuck to the sternum, hence the value of MRI. Or you get a great aneurysm protruding out, and as in this case from the early days, and, and that is not good. Restenotomy with re-entry into the aneurysmal RVOT 
particularly if the assistant is opening the chest, not having quite understood. And there are lots of problems of re-entry. You may re-enter the pulmonary artery, the whole heart, or as I used to call it, oh dear, another case of cardiac bisectomy. Cardiac injury is all too common in these cases, and it's very difficult for the surgeon and very difficult to minimize. Left heart injury also occurs. And in a redo stenotomy, you must look very carefully and have good MRI and anatomical definition. You also must look at the femoral and iliac arteries and be ready, cut down, to go on to urgent bypass. And of course, look at the previous operation reports. Aortic injury is also important because femoral cannulation in that situation, if there has been an aortic problem, may be unhelpful. And also there's the problem of the morphology and where that vessel is. Once again, operation reports. And you alert your hematologist, you need loads of blood, loads of blood. Well, now, as you see, these are the Birmingham operations. They're very good. The commonest um, operation to do is uh, the fallow pulmonary regurgitation uh, group, followed by secundum ASD. That's much less now with all the closures, but it still is required, and the other ones you see. This is Victor Sang's, again, what he calls pulmonary procedures. I think they're RVOT procedures, and they've had to be done several times. But now, aortic operations are the second most common because of aortic valves and a number of things that you've seen today. And some of those valve repairs are coming back, as David Anderson showed very nicely. Radical repair of the fallows to tralogy, when you go back, a surgeon always leaves his footprint, even for the cardiologist to recognize, you know when a fallow that comes back to you has not or has been done in certain units. I've only ever seen one patient with fallow tetralogy radically repaired with no problem. Anyhow, there are many more out there and all need informed medical care and must be seen. Cardiac surgery at the heart hospital, again, mostly Victor Sang. The commonest was RVPA conduits required. And this again is very important MRI, and there is a Hancock conduit right in the front with the LAD compressed behind. And any surgery that isn't careful opening the chest can go through both and through the coronary artery, which I've seen. The surgery of the right ventricular outflow tract is the commonest thing to uh, the basic disease is fallow, followed by pulmonary atresias with the conduit valve but other lesions, particularly truncus, will require it. And I would remind you that the adult fallow with pulmonary valve stenosis may have such a calcified stenotic valve that you may have to be taken out even in their first repair. Now we have a problem, particularly those of us involved with the homograph for many years, thanks to Donald Ross. The um, first operation, of course, they all degenerate ultimately. It's a question of when. But the problem is when you put another one in, they do not do so well, however impeccable the surgery. And this is a problem. Victor considers that extra cardiac conduits of any type is a time bomb. And sooner or later, it's going to go off and he hope he doesn't have to rescue it. Well, there are solutions. As far as what valve you put in depends on size, position, choice of valve conduit and the availability. For me, I would always prefer the homograph, but many surgeons either can't get it or don't prefer it because of the second homograph uh, reaction. However, just as we're pondering this, along comes 20, uh, 10 year, more than 10 years ago, the catheter intervention with, thanks to Philip Bonhoeffer, this valve which, as you know, is a bovine jugular vein valve. Now, this has prevented many necessary operations and reduced the operation sequence. But has it completely solved the problem? Well, has it helped, you may say? I think it has helped, certainly helped the patient. But here is such a patient, 
previous history, patient is about 30, I think, a lot of previous surgery, homograft, then a melody valve, and then a melody valve endocarditis. So my colleague, Victor Sang, says, we're storing up and changing the problems, and the surgical approach is much more difficult when you've got a melody valve in. So if you ask the place of the interventionalist, I think he has an excellent place in the management of our patients, but he may complicate it. We may need hybrid procedures agreed with the surgeon, and we must have facilities for adults as well as children. The elderly that we mentioned this morning, or some time ago, uh, over 40 modified their survival by man or their natural survival. They have comorbidities, and there's been a recent paper which I don't altogether believe that people with congenital heart disease have an increased risk for diabetes, renal disease, epilepsy, and so forth. I'm not sure about that, but it does turn a simple defect into a complex one. Victor Sang gave me his recent results, and I thought I'd just show them to you because they are very good and they are carefully audited. Uh, as you see, they extend over a wide age range, median 33 years, commoner in the male. Um, comp uh, average stay 10 days, that's a lot for cardiac surgery these days. Uh, range from 0 to 180 when they go wrong, 30 day mortality, 1.64. Well, you can't be 0.64 of a person, so I call it 2%. But those are as good as you get in a rotten lot of patients. The Italian group who surveyed a lot of patients around Europe, I'm suspicious of this because we do not know what was left out by the reporting uh, contributors. And that's always a problem with multi-center uh, studies. You don't know what's let, left out. But in fact, their mortality was 3%, complication rate 30%. You see how high that is. And these are very important complications. I would say at this stage that if a tracheostomy is required in a cyanotic gooch, it has special risks that people forget because there are collaterals all around the trachea and I've had one or two patients die of hemorrhage once this has been done. That applies to cardiac surgery in this group. It would be inadvisable for surgeons not, who is not engaged in primary repairs for the complex congenital heart disease in children to take on such revisional surgery. So where is the role of GOOT surgery? We don't know how many patients, patients are going to appear to the surgeon. We do know they're going to be modified by the interventionist. Cases must be performed by surgeons with specific training in congenital heart disease, and there are various ways of doing this. But if you look at the training of a cardiac surgeon for congenital heart disease in the, in the United States, um, it's not provided for Gooch, it's huge. So how are you going to make the training so long? The second thing I'd like to say, a probably calling endless offense, Children's Hospital is not the place for adult medicine or adult cardiac surgery, particularly if they're forbidden to admit over 16 year olds and they need special facilities. Now, it may not be possible, so it's better to do it in the children's hospital than nowhere at all or do it badly. So who should be doing this surgery? What training and qualifications are needed? How can it be regulated? Huh, regulated, that's a good word. Where should, for cardiac surgery, where should the care be delivered and how can the results be seen and assessed? There's such a thing called eminence-based medicine making the same mistakes with increasing confidence over an impressive number of years, and I think it can apply to seniors. The more senior the colleague, the less importance is placed on the mundane need for evidence. I think that's true. I would like to say we physicians have a role in this. We have to make sure the inoperable, as designated, is not operable, and we have to ask if we don't know. The real cause of death in surgery, as far as I can see in this group, is inexperience, which is made up of a number of things. I think cardiac surgery in Gooch should be centralized, not occasional, 
and the, uh, uh, it should be in the specialist unit, and this should rightly limit the number of centres. For a city like Athens, I wouldn't have thought you need one, more than one query too. But who am I to tell you what to do? I shouldn't. Cardiac surgery may have to be referred to another unit or surgeon if the unit concerned finds it unusual or rare. And it's better to do that, as in, for instance, Epstein is a good example, to send it to the experienced rather than make a mess. It's important to avoid unnecessary deaths and complications. These patients have had a lot of problems. So, for the general organization, success requires patience and enough of them, persistence, and another form of patience, and a passion to do it. A passion for the poor surgeon he must have, since he may be 12 hours in the operating theater. Oh well, doctor, thinks the patient, you did your best. I'm afraid we're very far from that in the management of Gooch patients and in the management of Gooch surgery. In many places in the world, I, am not, I cannot say what goes on in your city but this is definitely around the world, not true for the Gooch patients. I thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to say goodbye to you. Thank you.